if you think about it, Land Rover has always traded in connectivity. Rather than the infinite streams of ones and zeros that define humankind in the year 2019, the original Series 1 pioneered a go-anywhere attitude. It made the seemingly impossible possible, backed up by a robust off-road platform. Crucially, these were also cars with character, machines with soul, a pan-generational, classless fact of life as much as a means of transport. And now, there's a new one. Well, two new ones, in fact. Okay, so the name Defender, what a great name for a car that is, didn't arrive until a relatively recent September 1990. But at last, here we have a successor to one of the very, very few cars that genuinely deserves the adjective iconic. It uses a brand new chassis architecture, looks familiar, yet different. It's available in short wheelbase 90 form or long wheelbase 110 form, promises state-of-the-art and beyond infotainment, has an ingeniously reconfigurable interior, can wade through 900 millimeters of water and tow up to 3.5 tons, though perhaps not at the same time. Towards the end of its life, the old Defender was shifting around 30,000, that's 1%. So the new one obviously has to do a lot better than that. But the question is, what kind of car should the new Land Rover Defender be? Well, it's got to be modern and relevant, surely. Land Rover's chief design officer, Jerry McGovern, breaks it down into three sort of basic elements. The first one is visceral. Do you want it the first time you clap eyes on it? Secondly, does it work properly once you've bought it? And thirdly, have you built a lasting relationship with it? There sure is a lot of emotion attached to the Land Rover Defender, which is a vehicle primarily designed to get down a seriously muddy, rutted track like the one that's just over there. All right, well, let's have a look at some of the highlights then. First of all, I should point out that this one does feature some uh, quite nice options. Behind this, this isn't standard, there's a winch. You want a winch in your Land Rover Defender, don't you? Steel wheels, they have made this thing look so flipping cool on steel wheels, it's amazing. If you know your Land Rover Defenders, you will recognize, I guess it's a shoulder line. This is probably my favorite thing in the new car, actually, the way the designers have managed to preserve, you know, the basic form language of the old Land Rover Defender, which is a pretty ancient car, but somehow they've preserved it, brought it up to date, and made it not look like a cartoon. It's so cool. In terms of understanding, the basic understanding of the form language, it's quite simple, really. Everything on the side is kind of horizontal and linear and the bits at the end are vertical. And that kind of continues inside. <laughs> oh. So what do you notice? Well, one of the things that's informed the whole aesthetic language of the interior for this car is the structural elements. Um, you know, for a car that's tough and robust, it's nice to see some of the elements of its construction exposed. So you've got screw heads here. Look at this, even this material, that's magnesium vital, the um, eight-speed automatic transmission from ZF. The gear lever is mounted up here, so that liberates all this space. And we have a central jump seat, so three abreast seating, or you fold it down for a more conventional layout. The touch screen, by the way, is uh, a new system that Jaguar Land Rover are pioneering with this car. It's called the PV Pro, P-I-V-I -I Pro. These days, it's all about software. So this car features over-the-air software upgrades. You're in the middle of absolutely nowhere and you need to update some piece of software in this car. If you have a sat phone and a satellite link, you can do it. It's as bulletproof as the original was, but in a 21st century context. Another thing to note about this car is the interior, as well as being ingeniously reconfigurable, uh, it's also easy to clean. You know, sweep everything out. I wouldn't have a problem with sticking my dog in the back here, or indeed my children without being persecuted or prosecuted for unnecessary cruelty because there are actually some seats in here. And also, and any parent will know how important this is, full Wi-Fi connectivity. It's basically a mobile Wi-Fi spot and there are USB ports all over the interior of this car. You can go anywhere and stay totally connected. And now, I really do want to go for a drive. To go back to what Chief Design Officer Jerry McGovern said, that visceral thing, when you see it, do you want one? Yes, I do.